Kendo Podcast Episode 104. In this episode, I want to share some thoughts that I have recently. Kendo Podcast by Hiro Imafuji from kendoguy.com. Thank you for listening. This podcast is about Japanese martial arts kendo for kendo lovers and supported by kendo enthusiasts through patreon.com. Thank you for your support, guys. Please visit kendoguy.com for more kendo information and how to support kendoguy.com. Welcome to Kendo Podcast episode 104. Okay,、uh, I just came back from. Uh, uh, I should say that it's not a seminar, it's a、uh, kind of a four hour camp for junior championship for the members of my,、uh, our federations, East Central Kendo Federation uh, kids uh, going for a junior championship in two weeks. So,、uh, I participated to support、uh, those kids.、Uh, it's always good to see those kids you know, training very hard and then learning all kinds of techniques and you know, theories of kendo and everything. And on the other hand,、uh, unfortunately, Uh, some kendoists who started kendo in their late 20s, you know, adult, you know started kendo in their adult, adulthood,、uh, of course, they have a disadvantage. They didn't start, start their kendo、uh, when they were a kid. So they're having difficulties、uh, that they should have when they were kids, right? It's very hard to. Deal with those difficulties when you're adults because it's so frustrating. But I thought, you know, by step by step, you can overcome those frustrations.、Uh, frustration、uh, is caused when you don't, you cannot get things done, right?、Uh, you have some expectations. And if you cannot do something、uh, as you expect, as you have expected, you get frustrated. But if you think, you know, it, but if you, you have a goal, big goal, I want to be like that. Well, let's say I want to get shodan, for example. I want to get sixth dan, seventh dan, for example. That's my level. I like, I want to get seventh dan. Uh, we have that big goal. That's a big goal for me. And then, you know, but I have to start small steps, right? You get six nine, but it doesn't mean you can automatically know,、uh, you know how to get seven nine or how to do kendo to get seven nine. Or not even to get seven nine. How do you improve your kendo from there? Uh, especially when you're, when you're not surrounded by eighth dan or seventh dan. How can I achieve that goal?、Uh, it's easy solution, maybe. Maybe, right? Maybe you just go and train with people higher than you. If that is a choice, I mean, if that's possible for you, that's that, you know, just go ahead and do it. If it's not a choice, you have to have. Uh, some goals, small goals in your training, daily training, right?、Uh, same as Ikkyu, Nikkyu, Sankyu.、Uh, no, why am I going down? Ikkyu, Shodan, Nidan, Sandan, right? Going up.、Uh, for example,、uh, you know, you, we, what we lack in, in, in the States or,、uh, you know, those who don't have. Uh, higher grade teacher, what they're lacking is they, they do, dr- we call it drills, but because we call it drills, they do exercise.、Uh, Kendo at the very end, like you see, like Ethna Sensei, they don't really strike until they、uh, not need to. 
you know, that means when they, the opportunity comes or you create opportunities, so you control the situations so your opponent will fall into a trap that you set up. And then you'll get them. Okay, that's uh, an idea of uh, controlling situation. So you have to control your opponent so they will come or they will fall into your trap. So you can get them. So that is what we need to do. Now, if we know that goal, we have to teach them, teach our students how you can accomplish that. Of course, it takes time. You need to train hard. You need to train a lot. But at least they need to know the path to get there. Because, you know, they're not kids. You know, if you started kendo in like late 30s or early 30s or late 20s, you, law, you have already lost like 10 years, 20 years of training kendo. Right? You have to catch up. And I think you can catch up. I believe you can do it. But we need to know how to do it right. So step by step, step you need to understand what you have, have to accomplish uh, in each training. Right? So once you can become big strike, you should be able to uh, strike small. But this transaction from big strikes to small strikes, a lot of people can't do it, can't accomplish it. So you have to, we have to guide them to accomplish it. Now, you have to break, we have to break down the, uh, this transaction into small pieces so they can go, they can uh, constantly work on those pieces. And then they can be motivated. If, you know, a small, a small accomplishment is huge. It's a huge thing for them. They need to accomplish so they can improve and they can continue kendo. Now, the reason what I'm saying, I know why I'm just focusing on this lately is that, uh, like, I become four, I will become 45 years old soon, and then I don't have much time left to train. Now, let's say I can live 20 years, for example. But me being here, being able to do kendo, I might not be, be able to do kendo because of my health issue, like back issue, shoulder issue, uh, wrist, a lot of issues. You know, I might have to stop kendo one day. Uh, so I need to make these path so they can... Uh, you know, at least I can leave some guidance. So I've been thinking this, uh, thinking this a lot. How can you accomplish kendo in daily? Uh, like kendo from a book I learned. Kendo, kendo is I think it's a Yano Sensei's book. I've been reading Yano Sensei's book a lot now. Kendo is. Uh, is a part that you prepare. That's kendo, preparation. Before you strike, that's kendo. You prepare, you take center, you, uh, you set up traps, and then once you launch your strike, that's an exercise already. Of course, you have to take zanshin and stuff, but preparation part is the kendo part. And once you launch, that's exercise. You don't need to think anymore because you have done a lot of work before, right? Once you launch, that means you see an opportunity and that you thought that was the best opportunity, opportunity to strike. So you have done, you should have done a lot of work before you execute strike. That's why you're striking, okay? So I thought, okay, that is a kindle I learned as well. And then a lot of people don't know that, especially beginners. They just strike, strike, strike. Okay, that is a phase. But they need to know what they should be doing soon or what kendo, what kind of kendo they should be doing. What's the goal? You know, so they need, they shouldn't be just exercising through basic uh, drill of the basic movements. They need to focus on how can you, can they 
use this movement into real kendopa, which is before you strike, before they strike. Okay, so uh, you need kiken taichi and everything. You need to learn small strikes and how you can get, take center. And the reason why you strike kote, okay, is kote should be open, right? Unless you're a very beginner, you have to learn how to strike everything. Okay, then you, we have to open our targets so they know how they should be striking. But once they put men on, okay, and they became, you know, they know what how to strike kote, how to strike men, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now, when to strike? Why are they are striking kote? Because it's open, right? We don't, no one opens up kote in jugeko or in fight. Right? No one does that unless they are setting up a trap. So, uh, you know, because Kote is open, uh, that you strike. And how can you open it? Why, why, when do you, do you get strike Kote? Maybe when you're striking men, maybe when you block, right? When you're, you, when you move your hands, you get hit. On kote, right? So they need to know that beginners, even beginners, should know. I think they should know that. Okay. Otherwise, when they when when are they going to learn that? Like when they started kendo in their thirties, uh, uh, it's hard to get to that point to real realize right by themselves. Oh, this is how I should be doing. They pass that uh, phase. You know, you have to be young to realize or just going through the movement and suddenly they get the idea of kendo and then, you know, you know. That's, that's kind of, you have to do it, you, sh you have to start kendo when you're a kid to do so. So you have to know what to do, I think. And I was reading Yano Sensei's book and I was, you know, my kendo was so bad today. Because uh, I was just reading Yano Sensei's book, and uh, uh, his sensei, I don't, I didn't, I don't remember the name of the sensei, but you, you know, it's like you, it should be as if you have fire through your shunai, okay, it's through your sword. Uh, you have to put pressure on your opponent, like a fire, firing at, you know, fire at your opponent. I forgot about that. And my semi didn't work at all today. That's because I'm just doing, I'm, I wasn't doing anything. All right. So I, I read it, but I didn't really picture it. I didn't practice in my head. I wasn't ready. Uh, I wasn't ready to do that. I read it. I knew it, but I wasn't doing it because I didn't practice in my head. So the knowledge was nothing because I didn't use it. So that means it's the same as I didn't know what I should be doing. So, you know, knowledge, whatever you learned, you got to do it right away. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. Uh, you learn new things, you do it right away. Otherwise, you don't get it. So each time, each training is so precious. Time is so precious. If you get frustrated, you know, just break the movements into pieces. If it's hard for you to break down, ask your teacher what you can do from, you know, uh, from uh, one, step one. What's next? What's next? Okay. And then you can accomplish uh, whatever you're trying to do. And if you have your friends get together. Get together with your kendo mates and work on those whatever you learned on that week or something like that. Uh, so you, you you guys can help each other. Okay? So that's what I thought I should share. And, you know, sometimes you have to go out there and then learn from big teachers and big senseis, great, great senseis. And, but if you're not lucky enough to do so, you just have to work on every day, right? In your head, if you cannot work, uh, if you cannot train, in your head, train in your head, uh, just step by step, go through your motion, 
This is what I'm, I want to accomplish. If you cannot imagine what you want to do, you cannot do it. Okay, so try to imagine whatever you want to accomplish and then uh, and make it more vivid. Every time you ima imagine, make it vivid, more vivid, more vivid. And then you will be able to do it. Okay, one day, because you are practicing your head. All right? So you can do it, but you just have to make it happen. You know, you can do it. If you can imagine, you can do it. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next podcast.